Welcome back to Mr. News Art Class. It's wonderful to see your smiling faces today. Today we're just going to be using a half size sheet of paper and a pencil. And all we're going to be doing today is practicing. What we're doing here is uh, we're thinking about shapes and forms. Go ahead and label your paper as such. When we talk about the word shapes, we're talking about two-dimensional flat areas that are enclosed by lines. Uh, so you can obviously think of some specific shapes like circles, triangles, squares. Go ahead and practice uh, maybe 10 or 12 different shapes that you can think of. So there, I've uh, made quite a few different shapes. Notice that some of these are shapes that I have made up entirely, and others are shapes that have names like hearts, stars, hexagons. When we move on to forms, what we're talking about with forms is three-dimensional shapes. And we can put two-dimensional shapes together to create forms. But in order to do that, what we first want to do is uh, take a look at some actual three-dimensional objects and see how they're put together. So here I have a jar of paint, a bottle of paint, and um, it, it is a cylinder, which, as you know, has uh, the, the bottom of it is a circle, the top of it is a circle, but if we take a look at it f straight on like this, then it looks like a circle. But what happens to that shape if we tilt it in perspective? Now, still just looking at this shape along the bottom of the jar, it doesn't look like a circle anymore because I've tilted the bottle in perspective. Now it looks like an oval. So as we tilt objects in three dimensions, let's go ahead and make a cylinder. But even though cylinders are topped with a circle, we should use an oval to draw it. So we'll start with the top of the cylinder being an oval. And notice that the two sides just come straight down. And the bottom is going to be interesting. This is where we are going to determine uh, how much light can pass through this object. If it is transparent, then the bottom is going to be an oval, just like the top. If it is opaque, that means no light can travel through it, you can't see through it, then the bottom, notice, is just half of that oval instead of the whole oval. Okay, so that's a simple way to create a cylinder. You may have already learned how to make it that way, but now we understand why we use ovals instead of circles. Because as you tilt an object in perspective, the shape of it changes. So the same is true for a cube. You've probably done this before. Go ahead and do it with me. Where you draw a square, And then you make little diagonal lines coming out from the corners. And then you connect the edges to make a cube. This works because a square in perspective sometimes looks like a parallelogram. But not always. It depends on which way you turn it. Sometimes a square in perspective Follow on, along this with me. Sometimes a square in perspective looks like a trapezoid. So here I've drawn a square with a trapezoid on top. Now, at the moment, that might not look like a cube. You may not, you may be having a hard time seeing it, but watch what I can do here. From the top two corners, I'm gonna drop vertical lines straight down. And now that's, this looks like a uh, box with an open lid where you could put things down into it. There's another, another way to draw a cube. Think of it as instead of looking from 
uh, straight on at one side, think of it like we're looking at an edge instead. So we'll start with that edge as a vertical line. And if we're looking at the corner, then we're not gonna see one side as a square. Notice how this side here looks like a parallelogram. Let's go ahead and do that. But make the other side also look like a parallelogram. Now this is the point where a lot of people say it looks like a book, but we're gonna make it end up looking like a cube by adding the back end or the finishing of the top by turning that top into a diamond. And so far, these uh, are just using lines and shapes to create a three-dimensional look, but it looks even more three-dimensional if we start adding shadows or shading. So instead of holding my pencil point down like this, I'm gonna flip it sideways, where my pencil is sideways and I can rub sideways to shade. I'm gonna think about where the light's shining onto these objects. Maybe the light is uh, shining in from this direction. And so the top is gonna be very light. I'll shade it very lightly. Uh, this side, because it's close to the source of light, is still gonna be pretty light. It's not gonna be quite as light as the top, though, because the top is where it's getting most of the light. But then this side is gonna be very dark. It's gonna be in shadow. So I'm gonna make that side much darker. And so we see here how shading can make a huge impact in the three-dimensional look and feel of an object. Now today we're more focused on shapes and forms. Shading is a bit more advanced, which you can do if you uh, understand and if you want to, but for the most part today, we're focusing on forms putting shapes together to create forms. Move over to your other side here with me, and we're gonna practice creating an imaginary space using shapes and forms. So first, maybe we'll start with a trapezoid. Remember that a trapezoid is what a square or a rectangle looks like in perspective when you change the angle of it. Start with a nice long trapezoid. Along the bottom edge of that trapezoid we want a really really narrow rectangle. This just gives that trapezoid some thickness. You see how that kind of looks like a plank, like a wooden board of some kind? Well, we're going to make this into a tabletop. The way we're going to do that is make legs coming down from the corners. And those can be just simply tall, skinny rectangles. Okay. However high I've made that rectangle, I need to make the other one on this side the same height. So... There we go. Next, we also need to have legs coming down from the two bottom corners, and this is where we have to consider something called overlapping. Overlapping is when one object is covered up by a different object. So the leg of this table is gonna be covered up by the table itself. I can measure how tall this leg is and then bring that measurement up to this corner. I also need to consider that because it's a little further away, it should be slightly smaller, not too much smaller, just a little bit. So again, I'm gonna measure how tall that is, move that measurement here and make it just a little bit smaller. And straight down from this corner is where that leg should be. Same thing for this one. It should be the same height here, straight down from this corner, 
there we go, we have a table. Now, what if I want to put a plate on that table? Should I make it a circle? What did we say a circle is in perspective? What does a circle look like when you look at it from an angle? It looks like an oval. So when I put a plate on this table, I should make an oval. And if I want to put a glass, a cup, I can make a cylinder. Usually the cup would go above the plate, in front of the plate, you know, closer to the middle of the table. You don't want to put a cup right at the edge of the table because it'll fall off. That's what my four-year-old gets in trouble for all the time. But if we put our cup just past the plate there, that's perfect. And if there's a plate on the other side of the table, it's also going to be an oval. And it's going to be a little smaller because it's farther away. Not too much smaller because it's not miles away. Just a little bit smaller because it's just a little bit farther away. And the cup for that person would be here. And there'd be maybe some overlapping. Maybe that cup would cover up the corner of the plate there. Now, if there's a plate on this side, here's what you don't do. You don't make the oval go the same direction as the side of the table. That's wrong. Eh, wrong. Don't do it that way. Instead, let me show you over here, you do it the same way these ovals are. They should be horizontal because that's the perspective we're looking from. If you were sitting on the other side of the table, it would look different, but we're looking from this side of the table, so it's going to be that kind of an oval. And part of that is going to be overlapped or covered up by the cup from the perspective we're looking at. And you could do the same over here, but I've messed that up already. Now, now that we've had some warm up or some practice with these thoughts, flip your paper to the other side and just practice, just play, just have some fun putting different shapes and forms together to create just an imaginary space. It does not have to look like anything real. Here we were trying to make a table. Maybe you just make a bunch of cubes and cylinders that overlap each other. It doesn't have to look real. Here's an idea just to get your brain jump started. If you want to do something completely different, that's fine too. But just get your brain working.